Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and it's probably no surprise to you by now that in the last few years we were able to discover quite a lot of exoplanets. As a matter of fact, over 4000. Some small ones, some really 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 big ones. In today's video what I wanted to show you is this absolutely amazing virtual representation of all these planets in a kind of a map environment that was um, released by NASA Vera recently and was actually made by a much smaller team from Toronto. So let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So the official count of the confirmed planets um, as of right now is 4016, although when you're checking it, if you're going to be checking it, it's probably going to be a little bit higher. As a matter of fact, this goes up by one or two every few days or so. In other words, we've now officially um, determined and confirmed 4016 planets out there in the universe, and we know that there's going to be more and more coming as new telescopes, like for example TESS, that's already confirmed 21 planets, going to make more new discoveries. But sometimes it's kind of hard to visualize all this, especially when you consider how tremendously large the galaxy is and how much stuff there is here. So this particular simulation that I'm about to show you was actually produced by the team known as System Sounds from Toronto uh, that I've previously discussed on the channel because they made some incredible simulations, specifically auditory and visual simulations of some really cool stuff, including the famous TRAPPIST-1 system, a very famous Hubble image, and also various impacts on the moon, along with a lot of other really, really cool stuff that you should check out because the link for this is in the description below. And their most recent creation, known as 4000 exoplanets, is right here. So it's literally the entire map of the skies. And as you watch this, you'll see little blips coming on here and there. Those are the exoplanets that we discovered. And this right here shows you the year when we discovered them. Now, uh, they have two versions of this. One is the two dimensional and one is 360 version that allows you to move your camera around and to see everything as it's being discovered. Uh, now, the, the cool thing about this is that it doesn't really show you too much, it's very very short, but it's enough to realize how much stuff we've discovered, especially in that last second of the video. Right here, 2019, when 4003 planets were discovered, and you can kind of see how much of stuff is around us. This right here is the um, Kepler mission, because Kepler, the first uh, version of Kepler, K1, was actually looking at the night skies only in very, very specific location. And this is where we discovered over 700 first exoplanets, um, that was basically the largest discovery uh, to date. Then the uh, second part of this uh, discovery was in 2016 when we released something like um, 1200 more planets. So overall Kepler discovered close to 2600 different exoplanets. And a lot of them are actually right here along the um, ecliptic horizon because uh, the second part of Kepler was done in a very different manner from the first part. And here Kepler was looking at different parts of the skies and you can kind of see all of this by looking around the map here and realizing that there are actually unusual discovery chunks, I guess you would call them. Those are all from K2 mission. Uh, it was done in this way because Kepler actually broke down at some point and it had a very interesting fix where the scientists used the solar pressure, basically the pressure from the actual sun, to try to stabilize Kepler telescope and to make it look at very specific areas around the night skies as it literally went around the sun. So it's actually one of the most brilliant solutions to a broken telescope and the reason it was broken uh, was actually because of these reaction wheels that are used for turning the telescope unfortunately malfunctioning. So in other words, the scientists were able to use Kepler telescope as a kind of a solar sail uh, to try to stabilize it and to look at more different stars around the universe. Now there's one uh, little patch that I actually wanted to mention right here and um, this is the stars that were discovered using the so-called gravitational lens method. This is the method for where we often require some kind of a massive object, like for example a star or a chunk of dark matter, in front of the object we're looking at to literally create a lens that will then uh, increase magnification quite dramatically. This is one of the most powerful lensing effects that we can create using various astronomical objects and uh, the reason why we're able to detect so many different exoplanets here in this particular region of space is because this is the center of the galaxy and there are a lot of stars in that region 
that you can use for um, micro lensing effects. So this region right here is perfect for us to use micro lensing and to try to find various objects we would not be able to find otherwise in other parts of the galaxy. There are also a few exoplanets that are marked in orange that have been discovered by directly looking at them. These are usually really, really, really large planets with very wide orbits that you can actually see from a distance using powerful enough telescope. A lot of the other planets, specifically the majority of other planets, were discovered by what's known as the transit method, and that's when a planet passes in front of a star and we actually see this dip in brightness. So this is how we discovered the vast majority of them, but not all of them. And some of the first uh, exoplanets prior to Kepler were discovered using what's known as radial velocity method. And this is when we um, look at the star and we notice that it sort of wobbles a little bit, like you can see sun wobbling right here because our planet, uh, our neighboring planet Jupiter, is um, pulling at it and is causing this motion. So if an alien species was looking at the sun, they would literally see this. They would see sun wobbling around. This is what we call radial velocity method, but it only works for really massive planets. One of the first ever discovered exoplanets was actually this. This is 51 Pegasi b and it was discovered back in 996 using this method. Uh, and as you can see here, it's a very interesting, but also a very, very massive object. Um, but the first ever objects, the first ever planets, that is, that were discovered uh, back in 1992 were not discovered around a typical star. Surprisingly, these were discovered around a pulsar. And because they were the first objects and also because they were discovered so many years ago, um, they actually have names. They have really unusual, really strange and scary names. The star is known as Lich and the planets that were discovered back in 1992 um, our first one is called uh, Phobitor, then we have Poltergeist, and then we have the third object discovered in 1994 known as Droger. So all of these are mythological scary creatures, and honestly, every time I talk about this system, it sort of gives me a bit of shivers. It is a pretty scary system. But this is the first three planets we ever discovered, and the reason we were able to find them is because they cause the neutron star that they orbit um, to have a bit of uh, unusual patterns and very repetitive patterns that can only be caused by massive objects orbiting around the pulsar. And obviously this is far from over, so now we have Tess looking for planets, but we also have two more telescopes coming uh, by 2021. There's one called Cheops, and that's the European Characterizing Exoplanet Telescope, and we have the James Webb Telescope, that's probably the most sort of anticipated um, launch of 2021. So both of these will be able to not just look for more exoplanets, but very thoroughly analyze them and determine the possibility of atmosphere, the type of atmosphere, but also most importantly, if those exoplanets are habitable or completely devoid of any liquid water, atmosphere and potential life. For both of these telescopes, their first priority is actually going to be looking at some of these objects and discovering what's hiding underneath the atmosphere and what's really there. But they also are going to be looking for new objects, so in about five years from now, you're actually going to look at this map very differently. There's probably going to be close to 20,000 if not more objects, and it's going to be filled with various exoplanetary objects we never thought of discovering before. But until then, uh, check out this video that I posted in the description um, and take a look at the NASA's catalog of already discovered exoplanets. I personally think this is probably one of the best videos that System Sounds ever made. Uh, this is definitely one of the best representations of our discovery so far. And most importantly, it allows you to dream and imagine what is out there, what's going to be discovered by the scientists in the next 10 years or so. And maybe one day we'll see something that we really want to visit. Until then though, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who wants to know more about space sciences and wants to know more about the universe in general. Come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before, and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.